welcome back here to my channel for another an everyday life of an SB. If you're new to my channel, I'm SB and I'm all about talking about mental health and awareness versus sharing my life stories and experiences with Asperger's syndrome, OCD, depression and the like so that hopefully you can get to know me as a person underneath these diagnoses as a whole. So in all further ado, also before I begin, I also do some video series based on just tips and advice based on my life experiences as well as my training as well as just tips and advice along the way just for everyday situation that we may struggle and hopefully some of these pills of wisdom will give you some support and encouragement and some enlightenment that you know you're not alone regardless what it may be that you're struggling with because we all experience certain grief pain and all that in the same way or manner of speaking so no further ado guys basically if you're if you're following me and you're my oldies, I thank you for your support so far. I thank you for engaging with me. Thank you for supporting me and doing what you can while I've been trying to support you guys, which is good. Matter of respect that, you know, we're respecting each other on our differences of opinion, regardless of what it may be. So big thumbs up for you all, basically, to actually be patient with me as I know that some of these topics that I'm coming to light that I am trying to not to shy, now, shy away from that I really want to address to you all right now is basically close to my heart to share, but hopefully maybe that I'll share some more soon. But in further ado, these are all about the Asperger's and series as well as some of the missing parts of the series of ADHD maybe a bit of dyslexia and all the like, but bear with me on that, and like I said before, it has been taken a fair amount of time due to my change of circumstance. So this one's basically going to be following on of these Asperger's Syndrome and series, which this one is called Asperger's Syndrome and Hair Pulling. So let's begin this. Okay, hair pulling is one of many of the repetitive behaviours and stereotypical behaviours that obviously commonly is seen with people with autism or Asperger's syndrome. Some people may agree or disagree with me with this, that this can be either a form of self-harm or self-pleasure or others may agree or disagree again to the point that it's a form of stim to help the person with Asperger's syndrome or autism to relax. Okay, hair pulling could be a sign that we're stressed, we're over anxious about a particular situation or circumstance that has arisen, no matter what it may be, you know, for example, maybe we're so stressed out that, you know, we don't like the, like many of us with autism, well, as which is a syndrome, we don't like change, but then again, I, as I'll clearly say this, it will vary from person to person, or another clinic, clinical example here to share with you all is basically for this if they were anxious or stressed is maybe there is a two month event that basically there's a like exam coming up and they're really 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 getting anxious and thinking uh, how they're going to get through it all you know depending on you know what type of maybe exam but look no further I'm here today to educate you to you all and also to teach you all about the hair pulling out, about the effects, how it affects us on a daily basis or during from time to time when we have either our meltdowns or any kind of situation that may bring us or cause us to that meltdown stage or even just to the point of where we reach the point of stress and anxiety. Okay, um, the clinical term for this is trechotelomania, okay, for the hair pulling. If you didn't know that, something new. When I'm really anxious, however, other mound or have my mount down, that I may either hit my head like face palming, you know, or even hitting my head against the wall sometimes to the point that it's getting really, really depending on, you know, how intense my mount downs are, I'll probably self harm myself, banging my head against the wall so hard until there's a hole in the wall, which I, and then it ends up, you know, I'm ending up with bruises on my head. You know, or sometimes basically with that face palming, again, depending on the intensity and what caused me to actually have that form of mouth down or what have you, that causes these kind of classic signs of hair pulling and whatever else. Basically, again, the face palming, depending how intense I'll let, I'll let it up with bruising or also me having a headache to the point that I'm so dizzy lightheaded that I'll end up having to, you know, find a way to force myself to slow down and actually lay down or something. 
another one as you may have seen in my videos is even though it's not hair pulling as such when I'm anxious or overwhelmed or what have you or even when I'm a bit nervous shy or even get excited or if it's just to the point actually nervous or shy is the right term here for me to explain to you all you may have seen in some of my videos I've been playing around with my hair a lot you know just little by little with my little strings on the lower end of my hair um, but when I'm anxious or overwhelmed to the point of a meltdown or a sensory overload, depending, I'm guessing with most people with autism or Asperger's syndrome who may be watching my channel or are one of the ones that are watching that has it, basically, I'll grab my hair as a form of a clamp, you know, clasp it. <sighs> you know, heavy breathing and everything else, and maybe try to pull it out into big clumps, you know, even though sometimes I'll brush my hair excessively until, like, clumps of hair fall out, which is a, which is a, a form of stress or whatever, or just, you know, frustration, depending on what, what it's all about, though, but then, again, like, you know, it's just little bits at a time, pulling my hair out, you know, like I said before, when I'm, you know, nervous or anxious, Especially when I have been on my videos, I've been doing that, you know, just Sometimes when this is happening though, okay, it can be a sense that I can't control myself, okay And it's quite a sudden impulse, you know, or thought to do this, you know, just quick, you know This has been clinically proven and researched, however, that it is out of control and impulsive In fact, an inefficacy group called Autism Speaks, which I know many autistics won't like this organisation, so be in mind of what I'm going to say here. They say that affected children and adults have difficulty with social interactions, and then will exhibit a restricted range of interests and or repetitive behaviours. When you read about or heard about Asperger's syndrome, you will come across a term called the meltdown, as I said before. I've mentioned so many of these series before, so if you want, I'll try and maybe link one on a card to you all in the right hand corner of my video so that you guys can actually understand where I'm coming from on this. There's a little keynote for you to revert back to. Um, but, you know, not all aspects may have them of these meltdown. It will depend on the individual. But then again, you know, there's a few majority of us that will. So I don't even think or assume for that second that everyone will have them. You've got to, you know, as I said so many times before, I'll gently remind you to know the signs, the causes and triggers to why they're having these meltdowns and all these other t clinically, you know, symptoms that comes out through the meltdowns and whatnot as well as basically not just the meltdowns but you know their oh, what's the word I used before their stimming or what have you um those that do have meltdowns however aren't always necessarily out of control some of us people with autism slash Asperger's syndrome will be able to control it as this the social media portrays and shows the extremity of it when in fact is not always to the extreme of these meltdowns again depending on the individual and the situation maybe they're in that's for that meltdown while some aspects may have developed some mechanisms to cope with this emotional overload doesn't mean that it makes the experiences any real okay as on the other part of the spectrum there are difficulties for some in regulating one's emotion attributing to the difficulty in the sensory processing okay which means of that sensory overload that leads up to this many different health conditions can cause this yet the best way to address and help this however is basically maybe some, you know as I said to know the cause of it the triggers and getting the right help and treatment for it as well as maybe a form of therapy even though there's not many, you know, therapy or treatments that are actually helpful for some of us or maybe helpful for some, but then, you know, different for others. 
As I've mentioned to so many times before about the mount downs, types, causes, treatments, along with types and advice to manage it. So again, as I said, refer back to that video, even though I think it was a full part series of my mount downs. As well as, I think I did a sensory overload video in that mount down. If I haven't, I humbly apologise. If you want one, just comment below and I'll make a quick one for you about what it is and how you can actually know about it, you know, science-wise and whatnot. When I'm going through certain stages and phases of situations myself, because causes need to do, do this or have these form of meltdowns versus sensory overload versus my hair pulling up when I'm stressed or whatever, you know, sometimes it makes me feel so embarrassed. The point is, oh, not again. You know, why is this happening and whatnot, you know? many people why are people looking at me and maybe pointing the finger at me or looking at me strangely to the point of that thinking that and assuming that I'm a crazy one I don't know it's just the vibe that it comes off from people so bear with me if I'm reading it wrong there has been some treatment or, or therapy to reduce this however but no immediate treatment or therapy but then again there can be a lot of reasons for the causes to why it's happening of these, you know, hair pulling versus the meltdown and sensory overloads, which could be due to having low self esteem. They are, you know, not confident in themselves, so they have lack of confidence. Okay, one thing to address here is accept that it does happen and it is out of our control. <coughs> Pardon me, it's not mine or your guys' fault when this is arising, however, of these meltdowns slash gear pulling and all that stages but the first step to address to you or as tips and advice to end this is from your hair pulling is number one recognize the signs and symptoms number two will roll over to tip number one know the causes and triggers of what's making you you know causing you to hair pull number three maybe once in a while you when you know and recognize if it's you know sensory seeking or sensory avoidance Maybe sensory integration therapy may help you as the best approach. Number four, high levels of stress and anxiety due to difficulty or flexibility to social expectations and the norms. Maybe find a for this is for that is find a quiet room, even if it is dark. Maybe for that person that is having that hair pulling stage or what have you, you know put them in there for them to calm down in their own time you know like I said forever don't rush that episode when it happens and last but not least it's, it's always important to have a good support system of family and friends around us when any of these kind of things are happening around us be it the hair pulling be it the meltdowns be it the sensory overloads and everything else that comes in between of us that has autism and asbestos syndrome Basically, so in all for the day, guys, this is a quick, short, brief overview of asbestos syndrome and hair pulling. Give me the like for the thumbs up for support and engagement. Feel free to comment below for anything that I missed. Basically, feel free to also comment below if you feel that if there's any topics that I haven't addressed yet of the asbestos and series that I could address to you all that you may really want for tips and advice along the way. Feel free to private message me on Facebook, basically on SB Answers All or even direct message me on YouTube. Feel free to follow me on the social media of Twitter, basically and Facebook, SB Answers All. Feel free to also basically share those videos around. And all for the do guys, love what you do, do what you love. Until next time, thanks for support. I'll see you all again soon.